What is up, YouTube? Uh, level up here. Um, I'm here to talk about some Street Fighter and the first premiere tournament of the season for season three was final round. And uh, I said I would make a video, but we've had like some shitty snow days recently, and I've just had off work. I've been lazy, but now, like now, I want to just do one real quick. Um, so I just want to get my thoughts on some of the matches of top eight grand finals, some of the matches from top six, 16, and um, the results of like certain characters that made it in that didn't make it, and most notably is Abigail. Um, Abigail did not make top eight, but between the Cool Kid and Storm Cubo, they took out like a lot of players um, in recent tournaments and in final round. Um, you know, they was taking out like F Champ, Fudo, Punk, uh, Mana RD, Sako, Smug, Human Bomb, Haitani, and like a lot more. Abigail was just wrecking shit uh, in the brackets and in the pools. Um, so, you know, whoever was using Abigail in this tournament, even though they didn't make top eight, they, they were taking a lot of people with them and putting a lot of players in body bags. Um, and I think the Abigail players will get stronger. And once they start getting accustomed to the better players, um, they're going to start sneaking in the top eight. It's only a matter of time before, like, you start seeing... Abigail sneak into the top eight uh, more often. You'll see it, um, and hopefully, like uh, at the end of season three, which is like basically a year from now, um, they give Abigail whatever nerfs they feel is necessary to make the game more fair. Because I'm not so sure if Abigail is a fair character uh, as it stands right now, even though he's not getting the the tournament results that you might expect. Uh, he's he's still very very strong. Um, so we got that. Um, it's nice to see an increase like online with certain characters. Like I've been playing online recently, and I noticed that um, we have Colleen and Manat players. That it's like I kind of bump into them like more often now. Uh, whereas before, you would rarely rarely bump into a Colleen and you know, other than the first month of like Manat's release, there was a big drop. And then when the V Trigger 2 came out, then it was an increase again, and then there was drop a drop again. Um, and a lot of the reason, for, <coughs> excuse me, for that is because people don't know how to use Manat's uh, V Trigger 1. Like it's too difficult. Um, the V Trigger 2 is easy. Um, but for like most players from my experience from what I've seen players who play Manat they use the V trigger 2 um, They're not very good players and they're not as skilled so You know you got that and um, A lot of the players think that they need to do like the infiltration or psycho combo to be successful with Manat, but you really don't if you're playing offline for your tournament life then you you probably do but there's um <coughs> excuse me there's still like many combos and variations that you can do with her v trigger one and you can be successful and you can still win with her so like don't feel intimidated that you can't win with her just because you can't do you know a 38 hit combo with her that's just nonsense um but her defense is a little poor uh, once characters get in and once she doesn't have the orb so you got to keep that in mind like you know she uh, you know it's kind of like Dalsum like everything is great when you're keeping the opponent away everything's fine but then when they get up close uh, outside of like certain uh, tactics Dalsum has you know he can get roughed up a little bit too uh, especially depending on like what character you go up against um so it was nice to see uh, a Colleen player in top eight. I know we just had Nephew just win Winter Brawl recently. He didn't do nearly as good in final round. Um, I don't even know what he placed. I'm pretty sure he, he was there. Um, but instead you had uh, Dad and Neon's uh, Colleen that uh, got knocked out by uh, Nemo's um, Urian, which is interesting because he had beat a Urian the day before and he took out uh, Dagora. 
And obviously Nemo is a lot better than Dagura, but um, still, you know, Urien is Urien, and they're both very good Urien players. So it was nice to see uh, Colleen making top eight uh, again. Um, and I thought that uh, all the matches were good. We had the one Cami player, uh, Valoran, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, prior to this tournament, I don't really know too much about that um, pro player per se. But um, it seems like every tournament, there's like always that one random uh, cami uh, pro player that sneaks in. And it's always like a different one, um, you know, ever so often. Um, so there's that. And what else did I want to discuss? Oh, I found it like a little alarming that like we had, um, you know, I watched some videos in like top 64, top 32, top 16, top 8. And, um, you know, I seen, uh, Momochi using Colleen and, and I know like through YouTube that, that, you know, he's been using her for a while, but you know, it's just kind of sad when you see certain players switch characters like that, um, that personally you think that they don't have no business switching to. And, uh, you know, he went from like Ken, Ken is like the character that he's most known for. And then he's just going to switch to Colleen. It's just kind of like a little disingenuous to the to his fan base and to his fan base that uh, really follows him or likes him because of Ken specifically. And then it seems like he probably just dropped Ken altogether for Colleen. Um, and then in the future, he might even drop Colleen for somebody else that comes along. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if that's out of des desperation to win or pressure from his sponsors. I, I don't know what their motives are. But, you know, and then I saw, uh, you know, Snake Eyes um, lose with Abigail, and he actually lost to Dada Neon. Um, you know, when I think of uh, Snake Eyes, I think of Zangief. I don't think of him using Abigail. So it, it feels a little bit like a cop-out, um, and I hate seeing it with certain players making the drastic switch to another character. That personally, I think they don't have no business switching to. You know, I, I thought towards the end of the year, um, I thought towards the end of the year, Snake Eyes was doing much, much better. He was at the peak of his game. Um, you know, he had, uh, what did he win CEO? You know, he beat Punk and uh, he, he was placing a lot better in tournaments. And you can see the progression that he was doing. Uh, with his character and and now it's just like you know how often is he going to use Geef in tournament now or will he just stick with Abigail until they nerf him again like I don't I don't know like we really don't know the the true motive behind what these pro players want to do with their characters um so it seems like every time a new season comes around with the new four or five characters or whatever it is, there's always like potential risk of like, you know, characters swapping for other characters. And we don't even know how much success they're going to have, honestly. Um, so, um, you know, Gamer B beat Daigo. You know, Daigo was falling asleep in his pools. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Even though, like, I know these players, they travel, you know, halfway across the world. They're really, really tired. But supposedly in um, Daigo's pool, you know, there was, like, cami mirrors going on or something. And he just fell asleep. <clears throat> so he was, like, dead-ass tired. And, um, you know, Infiltration had the little surprise with uh, taking off his jacket or shirt, <coughs> shirt or whatever to reveal that he's with Panda Global now. Um, like, I mean, it's whatever sponsors seem to like switch pro players like all the time, but, um, I kind of wish F champ didn't leave uh Panda global because he was with them before he switched to splice. And then obviously, you know, you had punk that got signed by, um, PG. So, um, that's just like kind of hard to keep up with too. I didn't really have a reaction when I saw Infiltration, um, you know, reveal the jersey or whatever, because like it, the, his sponsor really means nothing to me. So I was just like, uh, okay, so he's with this sponsor now. You know, he's got like multiple sponsors. He's like, you know, like 
like a NASCAR driver that, you know, when they drive their NASCAR cars, you know, and then they got all the logos on it and shit. So that's kind of how I see it. Um, but I am interested to see who's going to pick up Knuckle Do because he's a free agent now. He's no longer with Liquid. Um, you know, and a couple other pro players that are not sponsored, but it's whatever. Um, and I think we got NCR coming up. It's another major. So I think that for the Falk, uh, Falke, however you pronounce it, uh, for her, I think they might do the reveal for the next tournament, uh, for her reveal trailer. And, uh, I really hope she plays well. I hope, um, her gameplay is smooth and she's got like sick combos and she's like viable. Like I hope they really do this character justice. Uh, I hope she plays as cool as she looks. Uh, so we'll see about that. And I'm looking forward to watching the next tournament. Hopefully live because uh, for final round I had to watch it on YouTube, not on Twitch because I had to work. So we'll see how that goes. And um, I'll be giving my thoughts probably on the next tournament if it's good, which you know I think it will be, because that one will probably be stacked with a lot of um, a lot of competition, just like this one. Maybe not as much, but you know it'll still have a lot of CPT players and stuff. Um, and that's it. That's all I really got to say. Um, I'm, I'm already like almost close to 12 minutes long. I don't want to like drag this out, but I just want to share my thoughts. And that's it. Thanks.